when I look at you, I think I'm so fortunate to be related to her. <laughs> I'm her papa. That's wonderful. You know, she started out a little girl. I wish we had some pictures of her. But, uh, yeah, we'll maybe bring some on our next visit. Yeah, let, let, let's do yeah. that. Let's do that. Let them see that from the beginning, because it'll talk to you about your children. And your children, they are given to you from God. And when they come out of the womb, they come out making some noises, but they come out clean and beautiful and, and unspoiled by our society. And we get to take them. God must think we are terrific. You, God must believe in you. He's given you some of them little things. <laughs> and, 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 and he gave us you. And I'll never forget it. You were always so curious and so spontaneous and so observing and constantly pushing the borders, <laughs> the limits. To go when you start to school, more pushing the borders. And, and I think it's wonderful to, be, to have a, a, a daughter and a father so aligned mm -hmm. in the gospel. Yes, that That's is a blessing. Great. We yeah. are so blessed. I, I think back so often, of course, I value my heritage because of the way I was raised. I come to the world today as a unique package. I thank God for that. But I go back all the way to the year that I was just still a baby and God did a revolution in you and shifted your ministry to a real Jesus-focused ministry. You can talk about that if you want to, but you lived at through that, all of that, I lived through all of it, and it was at that time that Mother determined that we would travel as a family. Yeah. Now, there were no other evangelists who took their families along, not even when they traveled only in the States, let alone going to other nations. But we traveled as a family, and that is what has opened my eyes and my world, my experience, my world view is unique. So I see God very big, a God of, of great wow. diversity, a God of miracles, a God who, as, we, as we've talked, uses all kinds of people, a God who cares for the, un, for the forgotten ones. All of that is because I was allowed I believe it was God's plan yes. to be a witness during all those years until I came to an age that I could likewise be a proclaimer of the gospel. That's why your, your ministry has shocked me as it's <laughs> matured and you've taken on the world now and going to how many countries have you been to just in the last few years? I'm so glad you said that because you know a lot of people, especially families, here we are, father, daughter. I don't know what all people assume about us, mm -hmm. but you said you were shocked as you're calling my ministry began to blossom. It, what's wonderful to me is you never called me. No. You didn't call me to be a preacher of the no. gospel. I don't, know how Christ to do, called I don't know how to do that. I am so glad because I see many ministry families who, who really get in God's way trying to dictate the lives no, of their children. But when it comes to being obedient to the words of Christ, that has to come from Christ. So yes, we are in <laughs> harmonious ministry. We're as one spirit in two bodies. But that, that is possible because my father and mother were, were smart enough, sensitive to God enough to never oh, dictate the destiny of their children. Therefore, no. well, we looked in the scripture. As I was raising my children, I, of course, faced the same thing. Mm -hmm. I have desires for them. I have plans for them. But because of the example that I saw with you, I had to back away and say, Lord, Lord you're going to direct these children. And I saw in the scripture how God, he, he, he visited Abraham, and he entered into a covenant with Abraham. Yep. And then Isaac came along. He was a miracle yep. child. Yep. Yep. But God also visited Isaac and renewed the covenant with Isaac. The same with Jacob. So I understand that God visits every he generation. Visited he visited and you. And then you wouldn't give up. 
He visited me. He visits every generation. So there are no second-hand visitations of God. There are no hand-me-down callings. And you know why I think that is? Every human being, and oh, I pray that today, you're a human being, and I hope you will realize the value that God puts on you. Just think of it. God, I say this, and hammer away, <laughs> you know, out of habit. God believes in you, in people like you, and not, not just people like you, but you particularly. You are him. He believes in you. He believes in me. What have we got that he believes in? Oh, what a big question. I, I mm. can just, can't you just imagine in the beginning when God imagined to that. create creatures in his mm -hmm. image, in his likeness, male and female, that he had a vision in his own heart and mind of what those creatures would be. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, the scripture tells us now in Romans 8 that God destined for everyone that he knew that they would, that we would, be conformed to the image of Christ. So God must have what, had what, that idea. Hang on. What was <laughs> that you said? You slipped that in. Yes. Did you catch that? Say that, that we, for them. Say. We, everyone, that God knew. He knew you. You didn't surprise God when you were born. So God's destiny flows to everyone that we would become conformed to the image of Christ. That means become just like Jesus. Now, we don't know what we're to be until that day that we hear the message of Jesus yeah. and something in our heart says, that's true, that's for me, I want it, yes, Lord. And we become converted, we become one with God through Christ, then we get acquainted with Christ. Yeah. Then we know what God had in mind for us to be. And, and isn't God. that a great discovery? That's what you were saying. Oh, yes. That, that every day you're learning how, how to let Christ be himself through yeah. you. Yeah. I read where uh, somebody, a good writer said, practice the presence of Jesus. And mm -hmm. I've, I've done it. Practice mm -hmm. the presence of Jesus. And I said, for a few years I've been trying mm -hmm. to That's grasp right. that. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you say it? What, what am I trying to say? Mm. I've been trying to embody that, to, to, to speak that mm -hmm. uh, in my world, and, and, and to be that. Christ is in me. So when I meet someone that's in me, right now with you, I'm talking conscious that Christ is speaking through me. That humbles me. Me? Christ would speak through me, yeah. He, he said, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. And then he said in another place, the words that I speak to you are not mine, but my Father's who sent me. Isn't that wonderful? And here we are, and we can talk. And remember what Jesus then said in John 17? He, in his prayer, he said, Father, I have given them your words. Oh, <laughs> to oh, think about that, oh, the same words that Jesus words, carried, oh. the words that, that he got from the Father, he has transmitted them to us. And that's what we believe so strongly. That Isn't when we, that a miracle? It is. That Bible. When we open our mouths and oh. speak his words, they are powerful. I heard you say one time, something that was such a visual to me. I carried it with me from that time, every place I go in mass evangelism. You said, when the word of God is proclaimed, we are casting God into the presence of the people. Right. We are allowing God to be there among the people by the proclamation of his word. He is in his word. He is his word. You might say, oh, come on. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's why I said we're so lucky mm. to be able to see the proof of what we say. Yes. Jesus spoke 
and then things happened That's to right. confirm what he said. That's right. We do that too. I was reading just this morning in, in one of your books about the miracle of uh, Maria Teresa. Oh. Remember that woman she was in, uh, in Kampala, in Uganda. And I'm, I'm thinking about, about God being present with the people yeah. as his word yeah. is, is yeah. proclaimed. She had come to, to the, the, the evangelism crusade mm -hmm. and she, was, she had a bone deteriorating disease. Yeah. It was this excruciating pain. Yeah. Someone carried her to the crusade grounds. Yeah. She couldn't move, she was just agonizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that happened to be a day that mother was preaching. Yeah. And she preached uh, a sermon called Woman Be Free. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maria Teresa came later to testify and she said that she was laying on her mat with such agony. And as the preacher was preaching, Jesus mm -hmm. said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity, that it was like a bolt of light Hallelujah. came to her and, and shocked her. The next thing she knew, she was standing on her feet mm -hmm. and she was completely healed. Mm -hmm. Now, where did that light come from? Yeah. What was Good that? Question. That is the power of God, who is always present to heal, who was there with Maria Teresa as the word was being proclaimed. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're talking about. We see the proof. Yeah. We see the proof.